Alright mates, how's it going? In today's video, we're starting Chapter 2 of Dawn of the Aspects. So let's go! As Kallak entered the remains of Galakron's ribcage, his imagination started to play a few tricks on him. He couldn't shake the feeling that this giant leviathan would somehow rise up and eat him. Plus the wind wasn't helping. As it howled through the bones, it genuinely sounded as if it was trying to say something. Like, No! Get out of here! But Kallak's curiosity drove him further. The one thing he found really interesting about all this was how had he never sensed this magical trace before? Especially since it was in a place he'd visited quite a few times. He started to think that perhaps someone had recently placed something here. The undead Scourge had spent a lot of time trying to excavate this skeleton, but then they'd been driven away before they could dig too deep. And from what Kallak could sense, whatever was down here was buried very, very, very far down. Which actually suggests it's been here for a long time. Possibly since these remains fell in the first place. Kallak concentrated really hard and conjured a purple sphere. The ball then floated through the air and gently drifted to a particular spot and then started burrowing its way down through thousands of years of ice and snow and soil and stuff. But before Kallak could even sit down, the ball faded out. Looked like he was going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. So he started digging, and as the hole grew deeper and deeper, images started flashing through his mind. A yellowish proto-dragon arguing with an orange one, a charcoal grey proto-dragon laughing harshly, a hooded figure, humanoid, with one arm visible, a white proto-dragon shrieking as it shriveled to a skeleton, and finally, another dragon, with faint hints of green, flying towards Kallak. Its eyes are milky white, preparing to strike. These images kind of took Kallak by surprise, so he kind of yelped and fell on his ass. What the bloody hell was all that about? The visions had been so lifelike that he'd felt as if he was actually there, participating in the brief scenes. And none of them made any sense, especially the last two. They were a bit spooky. He picked himself up and investigated the hole. Whatever the source of these magical emanations, he was close. He only needed to dig a little bit more. So he did, and although he didn't experience any further visions, he did notice a soft lavender aura rise up from the hole, which gave him slight pause. Wow, that smells nice. Not much longer after that, his claws finally came into contact with something that wasn't Earth. He lifted the small octagonal object out as delicately as a dragon can, and he noticed it was made of some weird metal he'd never seen before in his life. It was kind of like gold, but also kind of like iron, but also kind of like palladium, and it smelled like that lavender smell. Kallak immediately tried to probe the artifact further, but as soon as he did, the Lavender Aura disappeared. So he stopped probing, but the damage seemed to be done. Not only did the Aura not return, but the emanations coming from the artifact had ceased as well. Bollocks. Kallak was just about ready to give up, put the artifact down and leave. But then he decided he'd at least take the artifact with him. He head back up to the surface and found a spot between ribs that was wide enough for him to exit. And as he got out into the open, he suddenly felt an overwhelming feeling that he was being watched. He looked to his right and almost grabbed his pants. Staring right at him was the giant, lifeless skull face of Galakrond. Kallak couldn't help but laugh. I guess I kinda was being watched. He looked down at the artifact to make sure his grip was good and tight, and then, satisfied that it was, he took to the skies. It was time to return to the Nexus, see if he could find out more about this object he carried. He still realised that there were, in fact, other, more pressing matters that needed to be attended to, but this artifact gave him the perfect excuse not to think about it. Just as becoming the aspect of magic had given him the perfect excuse not to think about Anvina. Ugh. Kallak grimaced and immediately shook away that thought. He wasn't ready to face that anytime soon. He made his way back past Wormrest Temple and disappeared into the night sky. And we're leaving it there! So, that's a lot of mysteries. It's almost like a J.J. Abrams mystery box thing. Except I'm pretty sure these mysteries will actually get answered rather than just be replaced with more mysteries. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying the book. I'm not affiliated to any retailers, blah 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 blah. Also, there's a link to my Discord server and my Patreon page too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!